So, my fiance has way too many role playing books. Like, you see this? That's not even a, a pin drop. Oh, keep going. Oh, there's more. Like, you don't even know. This isn't even half. Keep going. No, that hardly even counts. There's more. I know, it's piled so high, you can't even see them. Hey, I'm back here. But, there's more coming. Coming. Yeah. Keep showing them. We're getting close now. Hi, I'm still here. That's all the books. This is the magazines. Oh, right, there was more on the table, or the chair, I mean. I forgot about those ones. This is my entire role playing library. And we're going to get into it a book at a time here on Retro Reviews. Hey everybody and welcome to Retro Reviews, our weekly review of old school Dungeons and Dragons books. Probably might get some new stuff in there as well, but right now it's kind of going through my retro stuff, trying to clean out my collection, figure out what I want to keep, what I want to get rid of, and to keep me from rambling, Laura. I've got a list of questions that I'm going to go through, a little interview style. Uh, so let's dive in with this week's book. What book do we have? We have the myth, the legend, the most deadliest Dungeons and Dragons module ever printed, The Tomb of Horrors. Sounds creepy. It is. Do you want to give us a quick synopsis? <sighs> this was written by Gary Gygax. This is Gary's Kobayashi Maru, his unsolvable puzzle. Okay, He designed this dungeon originally because his local players, uh, which actually included his son Ernest, uh, was basically they're thinking they're thinking a little too big for their britches. And they're going in, they're clearing out dungeons, they're getting powerful, more powerful characters, more powerful characters. So Gary designed a dungeon with the intent to kill them. So this is the the how to play that yeah. Again, game. this has the the maps of the dungeon are in the inside cover of the book. Uh, all the numbers are all the rooms are numbered and there is descriptions and what happens in each of these just like a choose your own adventure novel. Uh, and yeah, no, this is, I just want to preface just how deadly this dungeon is by reading Gary's, uh, little passage from it. Cause no, no review of the Tomb of Horrors is complete without reading this. This dungeon has more tricks and traps than it has monsters to fight. This is a thinking man's module. And if your group is hack and slash gathering, they will be unhappy. If in the latter case, unhappy in the latter case. It is better to skip the whole thing than to come out and let the players know there are a few monsters. This is a writer's belief that brain work is good for all players and they will certainly benefit from playing this module for individual levels of skill will be improved by reasoning and experience. If you regularly pose problems to be solved by brains and not bronze, your players will find this module immediately to their liking. This, th he's not joking. The traps in this dungeon made me rethink the whole, I, I realized I was using traps wrong until I went through this. The, the most famous one is actually the, uh, and this game has been, this, this module is almost 50 years old. But the uh, grinning, the yawning demon's head portal 
it is one of the most famous traps in all of D&D. Basically, anything that is stuck in there uh, ends up being completely and utterly erased from all existence. Oh, wow. There are horror stories floating around the internet about players that have dived into the portal and, and basically, like, were... Never they, heard from again. They are, like, basically in D&D roles, uh, they are completely destroyed, like they're sucked into a black hole level destroyed. Wow. Um, the legend of the tomb was, was actually created by the arch, by the uh, Demi Lich uh, Sarak. And basically he went all over the multiverse creating different dungeons like this to kill players. So there is... Roger, Roger. Yes, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Roger agrees with me. This... Seriously, this is... This is just an entire night of, like, try to see if your friends can actually survive. Like, once, you're, once your D&D uh, group has reached a point of being like, yeah, we can handle anything, you pull out the two. Wow. Um, so where did you get this book? Uh, this I found at First Aid Comics in, on 55th Street in Chicago when I was out for grad school. Uh... I actually wasn't intending to find this. This is like one of those surprise finds. Uh, I usually go to uh, First Aid Comics. It's one of my first arrival in Chicago stops. Uh -huh. I go there. For I find, comics. Yeah, I go there. I'm trying to get all the original Marvel Transformers comic books. So I go there. I check to see if they got any issues that I'm missing. And then I look over the role-playing stuff. And I found this on my first trip out. So I found like... 10 issues of Transformers I needed for my collection, and this. Golden. Uh, so you talked a lot about this book. What's one thing that you really like about it? How? Pause. Water. Whoa, pause water. <clears throat> Okay, I'll go back to my question. All right. So you've talked a lot about this book already. What is one thing that you really liked about this book? I like how it puts the people that are playing it on their toes. Mm -hmm. uh, I ran this for my buddies back home. Uh, it was part of the uh, my going away week mm -hmm. where I'm like Saturday, I'm running to my horse. We had talked about it a bunch and everybody's like, I wanna try, I wanna try. I'm like, okay, but we're doing it old school and we're doing AD and D. We're not gonna do anything, you know, we're gonna do fifth. We're gonna go right, we're gonna do it straight out of the book as it is. Here's your pre-generated characters. We're gonna play. And they were so scared of this module just from the talks that we've had. They were just how serious they took the game mm -hmm. was it was one of the best role playing experiences of my life. Oh neat. Oh, it really lives up to its name. It does. That's neat. Uh, is there something you didn't like about the bark? The older modules, the formatting for them, we have learned a lot as a, a gaming community since this book was originally published and this is actually the second printing of it the original printing uh was a monochrome cover this was updated for the ad and d rules that was original D, &D. Mm -hmm. but still the formatting's kind of hard like the the newer stuff has stat blocks and information so you don't have to flip a lot of pages everything's right there a lot of use of bold uh print so you can actually easily see stuff at a glance this is you do need to study this as a DM and have your notes handy and even put some 
some sticky, sticky notes in the book to, to remind you of stuff because it's so hard to just, you can't really just run it, just open the book and run it. It's a dungeon that you need to have notes, highlight, underlying, mark up. I didn't do that with this one, this one, but I studied it for a while. But it, just having... You the, need to do homework on it. You need to do homework on it. And that's, that's the only problem I have with the book. But doing that homework inspires you for so many crazy ideas. <laughs> nice. Uh, is this a book you'd recommend? Every DM needs to run the Tomb of Horrors. At some point, you need to, you need to, you need to run it. You need to have that experience of, of being behind the DM screen with this. And you, I hate the fact that I didn't get a chance to run it as a player. Mm. Being the forever DM, always running the games, it's hard to find somebody that's going to be running stuff like this. But this is. You need to experience as a player. I'm glad that I haven't put too many spoilers into this. And by the way, there's mm -hmm. two of the, the green demon the green demons. So you don't know which one is actually the good one and which one's actually the bad one. Yeah, no spoilers like yeah. you just said. But oh, now that you have run this as a DM, is this a book you're planning to keep? I am keeping this one. Um, I pretty much want to get every group of players I ever have, when they're at that level 10 to level 14, starting to get to the point where they're like, we're doing pretty good. I'm gonna be like, all right, all right, you want to guys want to try it? Here's the two. I actually have an idea of the next campaign I run, I actually want the two to be the final adventure in it. I want to have, keep dropping hints, like letters from Sarak, that the players keep finding little uh -huh. taunts, come find it. Cause that's actually what Sarak did. He, like he planted, like, he built this dungeon to kill adventurers. Yeah. So it's the whole thing of, like, sending out the letters, having clues, having it all lead up to just a, you know, place where adventurers go to, to, to die. Well, there you have it. If you're up for it, Tomb of Horrors. Tomb of Horrors. Okay. Bye, everybody. Later.